good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, election campaign of candidates for deputies of the National Assembly of Western Armenia, Sons of Western Armenia, Karen Levonian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, election campaign, Violeta Gazarusian. The MFA of Artsakh welcomes the hearings held in the U.S. Congress Committee Protection of the People of Artsakh. Armenian prisoners are being tortured in Baku. A human rights defender sent a message on today in support of victims of torture, Vice President of the Artsakh Football Federation. The national team is preparing for the qualifying match against Abkhazia. The Election Commission of the National Assembly of Western Armenia invites you to participate in the seventh Zoom meeting in English organized as part of the election campaign for the National Assembly elections of December 2023. The meeting will take place on June 29, 2023 at 8 o'clock French time and 10 o'clock Yerevan time. The topic of the meeting is the Constitution of the Republic of Western Armenia. Levon was born on August 13, 2000 in the city of Sevan. Since childhood, he practiced karate and martial arts. After a while, he stopped participating, disappointed when during one of the competitions his opponent was injured. He studied at Sevan Secondary School No. 6, after which he was admitted to the Faculty of Law or Yerevan State University. In the future, he was to become a military inspector. In 2020, Levon dropped out of the third year of school and left for compulsory military service, serving in the third military unit. In one of the interviews, Levon's mother Angela said during the whole war his voice never once trembled when he spoke to us. It was he who gave us hope. He believed in victory. He kept it a secret that he was in a safe place. For the last seven days he only called for half a minute. All the time I heard the sounds of bomb explosions. I forced him to tell the truth. I found out where he was in the village of Karmir Shuka. His fellow soldiers and the platoon commander told about the heroism of him and his platoon. None of them left their positions. They fought valiantly. My son was only 38 days old, fought for 34 days and was martyred on October 30 as a result of a drone attack. Before that, they managed to shoot down the enemy's armored unit advancing from the Hell Valley towards Shushi. For his outstanding achievements, Levon Levonian was posthumously awarded a War Service Medal by order of the President of the Republic of Artsakh, Aray Karutsunyan. His body was buried in the family cemetery in his native village of Gomadzor. Levon is only hero of Gomadzor. There are many definitions of cultural heritage. In all cases, two components need to be taken into account. What is culture and what is heritage? To avoid using too many terms, let's concentrate on the living heritage approach, the practices, knowledge and know-how handed down from generation to generation, which evolve over time but continue to live and remain viable. Viability is the first indicator that heritage exists, has been, is being passed on in changing and continually plays a certain role in the life of the community. This role may change from an initial function to something entirely new and change is linked to living cultural heritage. The phenomenon of this change should be recognized as cultural heritage is not a fixed situation and, on the contrary, only when it is mobile and vital does it generate a sense of group, pride, creativity and satisfaction. There is perhaps a risk of an essentialist understanding of culture in its formulations, in which case any group of characteristics is characteristic of any community group identity, however, the meaning of cultural heritage heritage is to come before those group identities. For which groups is cultural heritage important? In general, the conversation about cultural heritage boils down to bottom-up democratic and horizontal approaches. However, for this to be possible, international arbitration is formed, which defines obligations to safeguard cultural heritage. The problem of safeguarding and preservation stems from the importance of tangible cultural heritage of the history of mankind. Yet from a certain point onwards, the international agenda release the importance of intangible heritage, the diverse knowledge and practices accumulated over the course of mankind's existence. It was defined by its vitality and its ability to be transmitted from generation to generation. The international agenda seems to aim at maintaining a link between intangible cultural heritage and its bearers. Baking is a successful example of Western Armenia's dynamic intangible heritage, a tradition that exists today, but it is no longer the same as it was for 19th century society. However, in the same field of pottery, the craft of making large pots needs to be preserved and restored as for some reasons it has lost its vitality.
sexuality. The communities, groups and individuals who create cultural heritage are given a particularly prominent role in the international agenda and it is considered that unless these communities turn to their heritage, top-down policies cannot be effective. In the early 2000s, UNESCO adopted the Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage with its attended obligations. To understand the role of heritage in the life of communities, certain tricks are necessary, requiring special knowledge and approaches. Intangible cultural heritage includes the following areas. Oral traditions and practices linked to language and speech, sayings, fables, fairy tales, prayers, and other verbal formulas which have a certain importance in the life of a given community regulate social and interpersonal relations, performing arts and skills, vocal and instrumental performances, and their role in community life. This includes solo songs and choruses, group and individual dances, and folk theater. These are social practices and rituals that continue to carry out their social functions and have not lost their content. Folk knowledge of nature and the universe, traditional crafts and related skills. Violetta Hazarosian was born on May 8, 1975 in Yerevan. Since 1982, she has attended secondary school, 124 graduating in 1992. Parallel to school, she studied at music school number 18. From 1993 to 1998, she studied in the English department of Valerie Bruce of University. After graduating, she worked in a hotel in Yerebuni. In 1999, she moved to Marcel, France. She has worked in various Armenian organizations. In 2005, during Samuel Petian's exhibition conference in Marcel, she had the opportunity to meet Armena Gabrahamian, president of the National Council of Western Armenia. She began working in the Western Armenian structure as a secretary. She was elected a member of the Parliament of the Republic of Western Armenia and worked as the Parliament Secretary. She is now Vice President of the National Assembly of Western Armenia. She has taken part on several occasions in the United Nations Indigenous People Session representing Western Armenia. She has also helped organize plenary sessions conferences and roundtables for the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia in Marcel and other cities. You can find Violeta Ghazarusian on our YouTube page, Western Armenia TV. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Artsakh welcomes the hearings on the protection of the people of Artsakh that took place on June 22 at the Tom Lantus Commission on Human Rights under the U.S. Congress. We extend our sincere appreciation to all the organizers and participants of the hearings, including Congressman Adam Schiff, Chris Smith, James McGovern, Frank Balloon, and former U.S. Ambassador to the Republic of Armenia, John Evans, for their efforts in raising awareness about the illegal and aggressive tendencies of Baku and for advocating for the rights of the people of Artsakh. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Artsakh has been informed that during the hearings the U.S. Congressman emphasized the need for the U.S. leadership to take all possible measures to protect the civilians of Artsakh and to prevent further escalation that could lead to new wars and crimes. We believe that conducting these hearings in this format is an important step, both politically and morally. The expansionist and militaristic policies of Baku pose a serious challenge and threat not only to Armenian people and Armenian statehood but also to regional stability and the civil world as a whole. Armenian prisoners of war and civilians detained in Azerbaijan are subjected to torture and inhuman treatment. A Ray human rights defender Anahit Manasyan sent a message on this subject as a part of the International Day in support of victims of torture. She stressed that this circumstance must be properly assessed. Any war or threat of war, domestic political instability cannot justify torture. In its annual and special reports, the RAHRD has always highlighted the inadequacies of the compensation mechanisms for intangible damage caused by the violence of fundamental human rights. These are particularly evident in the absence of compensation structures for intangible damage caused as a result of inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, says the message. The United Nations celebrates the International Day in support of victims of torture on June 26. The Artsakh soccer team is preparing for its selection match against Abkhazia. The problem is only the blocking of the road by the Baku authorities. The vice president of the Artsakh Football Federation, Maher Avanesian, said this in a conversation with New Sayem sport journalist. The Artsakh soccer team is to hold a qualifying match with the Abkhazian national team. The qualifying match for the European Zone of the Confederation of Independent Football Association World Championship is scheduled for July 10 at the Dynamo Stadium in Suhum. Despite 
by the current situation, the road closed. Our team is preparing for the Conifa match with the Abkhazia team. We are organizing and holding meetings, training sessions. Everything is being done at a high level. The only obstacle is this blockade. We hope that with God's success, there will be a positive political decision and we will move forward. We are provided with everything. The team lacks nothing. Since we are talking about the national team, we are ready for anything with the team, the coaches and the support staff. Whatever happens, even if we don't have food, we'll get ready for this match. If this situation didn't exist, we would have played Abkhazia here close to home. Because of the situation, Konifa decided to organize the match in Abkhazia, said Maher Avanesian. The final tournament of today's World Cup of Nations, not recognized by the United Nations, will be held in Kurdistan in 2024. Recall that in 2019, in July, June, the Championship of European Countries, not recognized by the United Nations, was held in Artsakh, in which also participated a soccer team of Western Armenia. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> 